four easy probability bag and stuff questions and how to solve them. Let's find out. What do I mean by bag and stuff? <laughs> it's a funny name. Well, bag and stuff questions are typically questions where we are going to be given some sort of a container. So let's say here we are given a box and then we are going to have a bunch of stuff and hence the stuff. So let's say we are given a box and it is said that it contains some red balls and some blue balls. So in other words, let's say we're randomly making this number. Let's say there are three red balls and let's say there are 15 blue balls. And then there'll be a bunch of probability questions about that, right? Or we can be given maybe a bag or a suitcase that contains, let's say, 10 blue t-shirts, maybe 15 red t-shirts, and maybe 20 white t-shirts. And then there may be probability questions about those. So these questions are very, very similar. And let's find out how do we answer these questions. And hence the name bag and stuff. Maybe you have a container and that has a bunch of stuff. And the counts of what it has it is also given. So let's see these questions and let's find out how do we solve them. So here let's say we are given a box that contains three red balls and five blue balls. A ball is drawn randomly from the box. What is the probability that the ball is a red ball? Or second question, the ball is a blue ball. Third question, the ball is a yellow ball. And we'll talk about this. Uh, it's an interesting question. Or the ball is either red ball or a blue ball. So how do we solve this question? So let's find out. So the first thing is that we are going to visualize what does this question look like. It will look something like this. So here we have three red balls, one, two, and three. And then we have five blue balls. <laughs> and I don't know, you may think, well, this is blue really, or this is more like a white ball. And I'll agree with you, but let's say for the purposes of this video, let's consider this as a blue ball, right? So how do we solve these questions? Well, remember that probability of any event is really defined as the number of favorable outcomes to the event divided by the number of possible outcomes, right? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to first line up all these balls, right? So it will look something like this. Now, second, we are actually going to name these balls. What do I mean by name the balls? Well, here, this is precisely what I mean. So these are red balls, right? So these three are red balls. So let's say their name starts with the letter R, R for them. And this is the first ball, let's name it R1. Let's name this R2. Let's name this ball R3. And they look like some sort of an alien name, but obviously the names of balls, these are not names of people and so on and so forth, right? Now, what about these balls? Well, they are all blue balls, so let's have their names start with the letter B. This is the first one, let's call it B1. This is B2, this is B3, this is B4, and this is B5. So now we have named our balls, right? Now, I know that you may be thinking, why are we doing all this? And I think I have to agree with you that in your actual exam or test, you are not going to be doing any of that. But this is important for you to have this idea, the concept crystal clear in your mind, right? Now, so bear with me for a moment and it will all make sense. Now, what is, remember, we are trying to pick randomly one of the balls from the box, bag or the box, right? Now, when we are randomly trying to pick one ball, we can end up picking R1, right? Or we can end up picking R2, or we can pick R3. Similarly, we can pick B1, B2, B3, B4, or B5. In other words, we can pick any of these balls. That means each one of them is a possible outcome, right? That means this collection represents the set of all possible outcomes of the event of picking one ball. So how many of them are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are a total of eight possible outcomes. Right? <clears throat> now, we are trying to find out, let's go back to the first question, probability that we pick a red ball. Right? Let's go back here again. Now let's say we are trying to find out the probability that we have picked a red ball. So now, we know that probability is defined as number of favorable outcomes to the event. So, if you pick R1, will that be favorable to our event of picking a red ball? Of course, because 
R1 is a red box. So this will work. This is a favorable outcome to our event. If you think R2, will that work? R2 will work because R2 is also a red ball. Similarly, R3 will also work. So what about B1? B1 will not work because we are trying to pick red ball and B1 is not a red ball. Similarly, B2, B3, none of this will work. So the three outcomes which are favorable, they are R1, R2, R3. So the number of favorable outcomes, one, two, three, it's three. Divided by total number of possible outcomes, eight. So this is the probability of picking a red ball. That's it. Similarly, if we were to pick now a blue ball, that was our second question. What is the probability that we pick a blue ball? Well, in that case, now we have to pick either B1, because this is a favorable outcome, or we pick B2, or we pick B3, or we pick B4, or we pick, we pick B5. Each one of them is a favorable outcome to picking a blue ball. So there are five possible outcomes that are favorable, divided by total number of outcomes. So if you see them, so remember, there were three red balls, one, two, three, and there are total eight balls. So simply, if you were to just say probability of picking red ball is the count of the number of red balls divided by total number of ball, balls, that is the answer, right? Three is simply the count of all red balls, and eight is simply count of all the balls together. Similarly, for blue balls, there are five blue balls. So numerator is five, and denominator is there are total eight balls. So this is the probability of picking a blue ball. Now, what about the yellow ball? What do we, that was a strange question of probability of picking a yellow ball. We did not see any yellow ball, did we? Let's go back. These are the different balls. Now, the probability is we have to find out favorable outcomes. Is there any ball that we can pick which will be yellow? Answer is no. We have only red balls and blue balls. So we cannot pick any yellow ball. There are no outcomes favorable to picking a yellow ball. So 0 divided by 8. Simply 0. Now this is a special probability. Whenever we have probability of any event, if that probability is zero, we call that event, we call that event a possible event. It's just something that you should know. Impossible event is an event whose probability is zero. So in this case, picking a yellow ball is an impossible event. All right, let's go back to our final question of find out the probability that we pick red or blue ball. Remember, the first question was picking only a red ball. Second question was picking only a blue ball. Now here, we are trying to find out probability of picking red or blue ball. So let's go back again to our outcomes. So if you pick R1, will that work? Yes, remember, this time we are trying to find out red or blue. R1 is red, so that actually, this outcome works. Similarly, R2 and R3, they work because they are red balls and we are looking to pick red or blue, so these three are favorable outcomes. What about B1? Similarly, B1 through B5, each one of them is a blue ball and we are trying to find out red or blue. So all these outcomes are also favorable. In other words, what we have is there are a total of eight favorable outcomes divided by a total of 8 outcomes. So this is simply 1. And this is another special case. So whenever we have a probability of an event, when we have that as 1, we call that event, we call that event a sure event or sometimes also certain event. Whenever we say something is a sure event or it's a certain event, it implies the probability of that event is actually equal to 1. 
So this is how we solve these types of questions.